Totally Baseless. Hey, it's Totally Baseless. Where, uh, yeah, I think the name, the name pretty much says it all. I think we nailed it. Uh, my name's John, and with me is a guy who inspired the new Beavis and Butthead movie. Dan, how you doing? Based on a true story. <laughs> yes, exactly. And a guy who's still trying to find the one out of 10 dentists that don't recommend Colgate. How are you doing, Dave? <laughs> hey, I'm good. Good, good. All right. So you guys are super into Seinfeld, I, I seem to have noticed. So this week's trivia is two parts. What is the name of the episode and how much did each of them have to wager in the episode where George gets caught by his mom touching himself? It's the contest, and I believe it was $50. It was the contest. I'm going to say... What, what did each of them have to bet? I think it was uh, 100 or 500. Uh, I'm going to go with 100, probably not. Not for all of them. Oh, that's right. Elaine had to give yeah. them two to one odds. Yes, because... Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not exactly. She, so yeah, they had to bid $100 each. <laughs> Elaine had to put in 150 Well, and she it wasn't Glamour longer. Magazine that George was <laughs> in <laughs> All right. Well, keeping on the Seinfeld theme, uh, Days In has just uh, started testing a, a big yellow pillow that talks to you. It gives you compliments. And none other than Patrick Warburton, otherwise known as David Putty from Seinfeld, is the voice behind the pillow. And he says things like, your hair smells great. And... High five. High five. Uh, yeah, not, <laughs> not high five, but... Um, Don't wow. boss Whoa. me. That's why you're going to hell. Whoa, those are so... Yeah, right. Whoa, those are some awesome PJs. <laughs> now, I know we're obsessed with Seinfeld, but apparently the uh, the board of directors at the Days Inn really love Seinfeld. They, you, you guys might be in the same age cohort with <laughs> yeah. the uh, management of Days Inn. But I wish we wielded that much power. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I believe they said uh, they wanted a nice, um, I don't think they said soothing voice, but an appealing voice, I guess. And Patrick Warburton, I guess, has that has that warm, friendly. He's also, you know, know, when you think of, you know, people of today to be pitchmen, you think of Patrick Warburton, you know. It's, that's first name, that's first name that comes to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know who'd be good for this? Patrick Warburton. What's Putty up to? Yeah, but I'd be calling him Putty. Well, he's no Wilf Wilford Brimley or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Diabetes. <laughs> yeah. he was also the bad guy in uh the firm it was hard to take him seriously I, i'm like hey, hey. Putty. <laughs> no uh wilford brimley david putty could never be the bad guy oh. well for me he's always the guy from the thing that, that figures it out first was he he's yeah in, yeah with, he's, with, he's, with, he's in there with, with kurt russell with uh, Kurt Russell, yeah. Oh, well, wow, we're talking Wilfred Brimley here, not Patrick Warburton. Oh, I'm talking about I'm, I'm talking Patrick Warburton. Wilfred Br Br Brimley. Did he? Uh, either way, did he? And uh, Keith David. I remember Keith David. Yep. Or was it David Keith? Ah, uh, that's the that's the age old <laughs> question, right? Yeah. I remember confusing both those guys all the time. Which one's uh, the one from Officer and a Gentleman? That's Keith David. David Keith. Yeah. Okay. Boy, uh, the reference is just um <laughs> yeah, it's like a, we recorded this episode in 1992 <laughs> and these references were still old for 1992. Yeah, exactly. They're like a decade old. <laughs> yep. Well, apparently Days in likes his voice. He he does have a very deep voice. It is very distinct. And apparently Days in is also shooting for a very specific <laughs> demographic that stays at their Establishments, I guess. <laughs> According to Days In, in the press release, they say compliments are scientifically proven to go a long way. Nine out of ten scientists say that the compliments go a long way to brightening someone's day. In fact, a recent study from the Society of Personality and Social 
psychology shows they reduce stress, lift spirits, and make you want to go to a different hotel. <laughs> and scare the bejesus out of you if you're not, if you don't, yeah. if you're not ready for it. You're like, what? The other uh, rejected candidates for the voice of the pillow were Janice from Friends and yeah, Gilbert Murphy. Godfrey. Uh, I think those are the ones for a best Western. <laughs> they got them lined up. My bing a ling. <laughs> ah, wow, they should get those two together to, to do something. If they In had hell. a baby. <laughs> or, or heaven. Because oh, one yeah. of them is dead. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, uh, missed the boat on uh, Gilbert Gottfried, right? Or was it Janice who died? Oh, I don't even I don't even know what a real I name knew, is. I know what Chandler would wish for. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we never saw them both together. Join us on our next podcast: obscure celebrity references. And uh, no, no, that's theories. this one. That's this one. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, it's the same one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. In an article that should be titled "A Short History of the United States," a policeman chasing a white suspect wrongly arrested the nearest black guy that he saw as soon as he caught up to the guy he was chasing. This 20 year old uh, uh, young black guy was uh, held to the ground and had a knee in his neck despite having nothing at all to do with the crime or the cop or anything. He's now suing the police department, which looks like he has a pretty good case here in this situation. But uh, another cop showed up, saw the, the white suspect and arrested him. Meanwhile, the third cop jumped on the innocent black guy, even though he was saying that he, he couldn't breathe. Uh, fortunately, he ended up uh, all right. But now there's a federal civil rights lawsuit filed uh, regarding this case. And uh, guess what city we're talking about? Well, this is very odd because it's in the very historically racially tolerant city of Boston. Yeah, yeah. You could have guessed Boston. What? Boston? No, it can't be. I, I think this is a, a case of being at the wrong place at the wrong time for that guy. He happened to be in front of a policeman. It, it, didn't, it didn't matter where he was. It's just that he's black and in front of a policeman. <laughs> Hey, he must have done something. Get him too. <laughs> I just love the fact that he stops pursuing the guy that yeah, actually exactly. committed a crime. He's in hot pursuit. And he's like, oh, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait should a I minute. Keep going, or should I get this guy? Priorities. That I've never seen Priorities. Before? Yeah. yeah. This guy might have done something worse. <laughs> I know yeah. this guy did something. Something about him makes him look suspicious. I don't know what. I think I better get this guy. Yeah, this might be the start of a new phenomenon, like Boston man. If you just Google a Boston man, and then it all just comes out like racist stuff. Not to so, generalize, but come on, Boston, what are you doing here? He looked suspicious. Something about him. Yep, the cop uh, drew his gun, threw him to the ground, and pinned him down. Uh, yeah, with a knee to his neck. Apparently, the, he yelled out, get the expletive on the floor, uh, which the suspect started to do, but uh, he got angry because... This guy who was just standing by didn't comply as well. He didn't know he was involved until the cop got him involved. Yeah, exactly. He's like, what? I'm just standing here. <laughs> You're not complying. Yes, I'm not doing no, anything. Of course wrong. I'm not. I'm I'm witnessing. Yeah. I'm a witness. I'm I'm not I have nothing to do with this. Yeah, I, I bet the guy that actually committed the crime was running with like a monopoly bag full of money with a stick of dynamite in his hand. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to you later. Uh, I'm not sure if he did something or not. Like, mm, I don't know. He looks pretty innocent. But and this the guy... police <laughs> even had a photo of the white suspect they were looking for. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I, I think the suspect even told the cop, I don't know who this guy is. And then obviously the cop was like, no, 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 no. He did something. Maybe not today, but you've done something. <laughs> what, what sucks is this also happened, well, this happened almost a year ago, but it comes out like the week that like uh, Bill Russell dies. So like the biggest like sports yeah. icon in Boston who happens to be black. And then like Boston couldn't help itself. Yeah. You, you <laughs> noticed his color, Dan? I, I don't see color. Come on. I only noticed 11 rings. Oh, this Boston. had to come out today. This had to come <laughs> out today. 
It's not like every other day that we don't do this. All right, from Boston, we go to Hollywood, where the new Batgirl movie, which cost $90 million, was just dropped. It's not going to be released. It's completely shelved. Uh, and you know, you would think after spending that much money, they would do something. But uh, no, it turns out they're not going to release it at all. Apparently, there's some a combination of a change in strategy and very low uh, audience test results. Uh, means that we're not going to get to see the new Batgirl movie. Uh, the star of the movie, Leslie Grace, has been very actually gracious uh, about it. Um, but uh, yeah, she, this uh, apparently this and a few other movies that they've spent a lot of money on are are going to get canned. Uh, if you ask me, it was for tax write-off purposes because they wanted to balance the ledger. <laughs> That's why they did it. Because as a tax write-off. Let's spend $90 million for an epically bad movie and then write it off. Well, I don't know if that was the plan from the beginning, but... <laughs> sure. It's like the producers. There you go. Yeah, right, right. That, you know, that would work, actually. <laughs> the funny thing is, well, I don't know how funny it is, but... Funny, haha. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Do it, I amuse you? <laughs> Am I a clown? I mean, isn't the sole purpose of these streaming channels that they have is to put their crappy stuff on so people can watch them? Apparently, that's what I notice when I look at the streaming yeah. options. Yeah, yeah. It's mostly crappy movies that you wouldn't watch anywhere else. You're like, this is a real movie? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen many like that. <laughs> I'm watching it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's nothing else. It's uh, the you... equivalent of the blockbuster super action section back in the day. Yep. Direct to video, right? The direct, yeah. to, direct to streaming. Yeah. But see, we go back you, to the thing, picture. though. <laughs> With, if the producers of this movie or the owners of the studio obviously aren't Latino, because if you spend 90 million bucks on something, you're putting it out there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're gonna you, use if that. you spend money on something, you're freaking using it. Like if your mom bought you pants and they didn't fit, you're still wearing them because <laughs> she paid for them. You know how much these cost? <laughs> you're going to wear them until they have holes in them. <laughs> And then still wear it. That's fashion. It's like the least Latina Latino thing about this whole situation. <laughs> that's, that's some white people shit. <laughs> Even with a Latina lead. Yeah. Can't catch well, a break. Oh, we finally got a Latina lead in a superhero movie, but nobody will ever see it. No one's going to watch it. That's the man keeping us down. I mean, if the Val Kilmer Batman can get released... I mean, but even if you look back like at the first Tim Burton Batman, which I think is awesome, but like Jack Nicholson is a Joker, but the Joker looks like a freaking pimp from a Robert Townsend movie. It's pretty bad. <laughs> so it's like, I'm sure that Warner Brothers has put out worse uh, DC comic movies than this. Almost pretty all much, of them. Yeah, fact. pretty much all of them. <laughs> yeah. Never forgive them for giving us a weird, angry, angst-ridden uh, Superman. He's like the uh, Boy Scout uh, superhero. They, that that weird Superman they've been doing is just... Yeah, yeah. It's like Superman's supposed to be like... The good the guy? The wholesome nice guy. Yeah. Like, they it's don't amazing. all have to be brooding. You don't have to yeah, they made him stuff. angry. Like, so angry, Superman. I think You're Zack super. Snyder only has one setting. Brooding. Yeah. That's it. Everything. Okay, we're doing a Santa Claus movie, Zack Snyder. All right, I want an angry, he's up in the snow by himself, he's bitter. This is going to be a gritty Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the same, you know, you, you might be, uh, you might have used up your one trick there. Well, it, yeah, it, it was good it, the it first It made time. sense for Watchmen, and then it, you could have plastered that on everything. You think at show. some point, though, they would, like, ask, like, the dudes that make the Marvel movies, like, hey, what are you guys doing? Yeah, I mean, yeah. those directors uh, do aren't do? exclusive to Marvel. They can... They could borrow those guys. You well, know? Exactly. But like, well, yeah, well, they well they did uh, Suicide Squad. James Gunn did Suicide Squad, and that one was good. The second Suicide Squad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, so these movies can be funny and, and oh, enjoyable so to watch. Good. Yeah, yeah, they can be good. <laughs> what? Well, at least the Flash is going to come out. That's going to be a good. All one. right, that that'll save us. <laughs> yeah. No, pro nothing problematic with the Flash. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. yeah. I think is is it going to be released? That thing still. Ah, who knows? It depends on what else this guy does. Well, if uh, Ezra Miller can keep his ass out of jail. Yeah, I think his ass and his uh, other parts are the problem there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's grooming kids like and... karaoke night. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we always have a Wonder Woman. At least we we'll always have Wonder Woman. Exactly. We'll have... At least she's always good to look at. Or provide strong female role models. I yeah. mean, yes, yes, that's what I. That, that's okay, what I said. 1989, Dave. That's your new nickname, <laughs> by the way. She's just good to look at. Um, Have you seen the yams on her? Uh, so oh, 1959, Dave has now joined us. <laughs> yeah, 1989, Dave. We're flying through it's backwards through time. You know what the DC universe needs? A good exorcism. <laughs> oh wait. That is, that's the answer to everything, according to uh, Bill Bennett. He was the uh, former sec uh, Secretary of Education under Ronald Reagan. And uh, you know, he has another kind of uh, funny titles that he's uh, <laughs> worked on as well. He Grand was the uh, chair of the National Endowment for the Humanities under Ronald Reagan. What? And now he's a frequent contributor, well, a guest on Fox News. <laughs> who's uh, recently said that uh, about the mass shootings, uh, you need to, you need schools, you need to clean up social media, you know, because social media can be cleaned up like that. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you may need an exorcist too, before your audience shakes its head on that. If you look at these boys, these men, these young men, they have deeply spiritual problems, <laughs> deeply. So he's uh, promoting the spiritual health and uh, exorcism of young people to prevent mass shootings about assault weapons carrying around 400 rounds of bullets for these no comments that's apparently <laughs> not to do with the problem at all it's not a gun problem it's a people problem <laughs> no it's a spiritual it's, it's a, a god problem Oh, well, it's there you God's go. problem then <laughs> it's god's problem let him sort them out let him fix it yeah isn't there a t-shirt something <laughs> like that Oh, man. I mean, uh, this is how far up their ass. I mean, obviously, this guy doesn't speak for the entire GOP, but might as well. Like, you are so unwilling to do any kind of gun legislation that you'll go to exorcisms before you'll do bad yeah, guns. Yeah. You'll blame a good possession instead of a, the guns being the problem. Yeah. No, no, no. It's just that these kids are all possessed. <laughs> so we have two options. Meaningful legislation or some crazy-ass pseudo-religious ritual. Which one will work? Yeah, he went on to say that uh, where are the ministers? Where are the rabbis, the priests? Look, I don't want to suggest something that would seem farcical to a lot of your audience. It's a deeply spiritual void. So that's a part of the answer. But yeah, to your point, a lot of the far right side, the conservative side has blamed too many doors in schools, <laughs> not enough God unarmed teachers, marijuana, video games, women being nags in one case, <laughs> and a lack of tripwires and man traps in schools. These are the real problems behind mass shootings, according to, uh, well, we won't call it the Republican side, the, but uh, Fox News. Everything but guns, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everything but extreme easy access yes. to weapons yeah. that can kill lots of people. But, but I mean, you should take it for what it's worth. Isn't this guy batshit crazy? I mean, isn't there some sort of weird quote that, that he said? And then he's all, no, 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 this is just a thought experiment. That I <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is about the, uh, he was saying, if you wanted to reduce crime, you could, if that were your sole purpose, you could abort every black baby in this country and your crime rate would go down. This was in 1989 uh, when he was part of the Bush administration. But he wasn't serious. It was a thought experiment. Thought experiment. I'm not really racist. I'm, Someone should have called me on it and told me not to say that. <laughs> yeah. why, didn't, why didn't anybody tell me that you can't say that out loud? Here's here's a thought experiment. Don't be a racist asshole. How about that? <laughs> yeah. But isn't these aren't they supposed to be anti-abortion? So how does that work? I guess he's just more racist than he is anti-abortion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> against abortion. I'm a little bit more pro-racist than I am pro-life, and I'm a lot more pro-gun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so on the sliding scale, is it also no coincidence that this guy was the Secretary of Education? Pretty much when our educational system started to go downhill. 
Is that a coincidence? I mean, and of course, he's a contributor to Fox. Of course he is. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, someone that would uh, uh, give somebody like this uh, a wide audience, Fox News. Is he, is he often on Tucker Carlson's show? I say <laughs> just abort the poor black babies. No, no, no. I say abort all the black. Oh, you are so clever, Tucker. <laughs> oh, but you know, we are just asking questions. It's just, just a, asking questions. It's a thought. It's hmm. a thought experiment. Legislation, yep, yep. no, 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 that'll never work. Good thing there's no racism involved. What about the people that don't believe in exorcisms? Say all the Buddhists and Muslims out there. Oh, wait, they're not out there committing mass shootings in America. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well. So is it any wonder that the monkeys have started to attack human beings? In the Yamaguchi, which is in the southern tip of uh, the main island of Honshu in Japan, uh, monkeys have started to attack people, 58 people since July 8th. And it's getting so bad that the city has hired a special unit to hunt down the monkeys with tranquilizer guns. Uh, they've gotten into uh, child care. Uh, one was uh, tranquilized and then put to death because he was uh, breaking in and attacking people. So maybe they know something that, that we don't. The monkeys are taking over. These are our uh, monkey overlords, and I, for one, welcome them. Yeah. You it's give happening. up easy there. It's happening, it's <laughs> happening. <laughs> I mean, well, it's kind of like everybody says that with like climate change, it's like the earth fighting back. Now I think it's like the monkeys going, you know what? We evolved, y'all fucked it up. We're coming for you. It's our turn. Once they start talking, it's over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're so scary. fancy with your opposable thumbs. They're like, we got that and fangs. Yeah. But they yeah. only pick on they only pick on the babies or or, or the elderly. See, they're smart, <laughs> right? Pick on someone your own size, so the little kids and the elderly. <laughs> we take out the slow moving first. <laughs> so that's evolution, right? They take the weak link first. All right. <laughs> yep, these monkeys are Japanese macaques, uh, the same kind that you see in those pictures in those hot springs uh, in, in the snow. Uh, you, you may have seen pictures of, of these, uh, but they're known to be pretty uh, aggressive. Uh, they've instructed people not to look them in the eye. Make yourself look as big as possible, such as by spreading open your coat and back away as quietly as possible without making any sudden moves to avoid being attacked. Actually, then they just steal your wallet out of your coat. Yeah. And if you have a banana, it wouldn't hurt. Just saying. Don't monkeys like bananas? No? Yes. Monkey want a banana? Monkey want a nana? Nana for the monkey? No, nope. if I'd only had a banana, I could have avoided this strategy. <laughs> you, you sound like uh, those monkeys would really beat the hell out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Take your banana. Here's your <laughs> banana. <laughs> Don't patronize me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's something like that. You know, like gangs of monkeys, though. Did you hear the tone on that guy? It's the monkeys <laughs> after they like, walk away. They're like, fuck that guy. Give me a banana. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I take what I eat. I want some Wagyu steak, damn it. <laughs> so they're not sure why uh, these monkeys have started to attack people. Uh, they're, they're not sure where this troop of monkeys came from, even. They just kind of appeared and started to attack people. So it's kind of a, a funny, a little bit of a, a mystery as what, what's going on here. Uh, but they're capturing and, yeah, in some cases, uh, 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 transporting them or putting them down. They're from the future. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's Planet of the Apes. It's happening, people. You heard it here first. I beat Alex Jones to the punch. Damn you, <laughs> dirty apes. From God damn apes you. And Z. God damn you to hell. You finally went and did it. All right, going from Japanese monkeys who will beat you up and pretty much try to take everything you've got to American car dealers who will pretty much do the same thing. A Corvette dealer is trying to get $100,000 above MSRP for the new Corvette Z06. Why? Apparently, because they can. 
a guy uh, set up uh, to buy a Corvette, uh, one of the new Z06s, called the dealer who agreed to sell it for MSRP. When he showed up to buy it, the dealer added on an extra $100,000 so that he could jump the line and get the next available car. He was not happy about that. And Chevrolet and GM have asked dealers not to charge all these uh, above MSRP, well, let's call it what it is, extortion payments. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they have no power over dealers who can charge whatever they want. Because the S is only suggested. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. This was a YouTuber, I guess. Corvette channel. blogger, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they wanted to, I guess, stick it to them. <laughs> you want this car first? Like, yeah. How badly do you want it? Yeah. 100,000. But Which at least it came with the uh, floor mats, right? You got the floor mats thrown in. So it was okay. Nope, that was extra. <laughs> that floor was mats extra. were not included. Also with the, with the clear coat. Uh, <laughs> undercarriage. undercarriage protection. There you, you go. go. You got to have the undercarriage protection. You got it. Well, at, least he was, at least he wasn't getting a Tesla. <laughs> no, this car actually exists. Well, <laughs> at least Tesla, they sell the car for what you what they say they're going to sell it to you for, and they don't go through a dealer network. So that's actually a big plus for Tesla. They've been fighting in a couple of states where the state laws are requiring them to, to go through a dealer. Uh, so they, they don't sell in a couple of states, actually. And this but, is part of the reason they can't control the, the customer experience through a dealer who can yeah, do Yeah, but I guess one of the cons, I guess one of the cons with Tesla is that they actually don't exist. <laughs> well, that, that's right. the big con. The, the, the founders, founders edition, edition actually, yeah, it doesn't actually exist. <laughs> Car may not actually exist, but we won't charge you more than it's worth, but <laughs> we never get it. You can put a down payment on it. I just love that we're besmirching the good names of uh, car salesmen now, though, really. Because, like, they can really... How dare you? It's an honorable profession. Has it come to this this honorable car salesman changing the price when you get there? Maybe this isn't news. Maybe we shouldn't be talking about this. This is just uh, <laughs> a, a, another day in the life of a car salesman. Well, well I... this was actually a blogger who said this. So how true it is, who knows? But no, they, they actually thing. do. Did the guy actually Jack wound up paying. No, well, 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 if you if you look at the bottom uh, of this article, the source was from this guy's uh, YouTube blog. So he was the source. Well, he could say, "Hey, they wanted to charge me three hundred thousand over. <laughs> they wanted to take one of my kidneys when I got there." <laughs> but luckily, I was smart enough to say no, and I thought, <laughs> "Yeah," and I thought I'd blog about it. So like and subscribe. But yeah. I, I think sometimes they'll like these people that want the car bad enough just for like to flex, they'll say, oh, look how much money I can afford to pay. I'll pay this crazy ass. So that's why like this dealership is doing this. Yeah. Be the first, right? You want to be the first to own <laughs> it. Badly. You want the bragging right. I own the Corvette C8 Z06. No but what else. I don't own is common sense or the extra $100,000 anymore. Yeah. And I can't afford to, to actually drive it. I don't have the insurance or <laughs> and it takes a lot of gas. But damn, it looks good in my driveway, right? And as soon as he drove it off the lot, how much did it devalue? <laughs> well, yeah, they'll offer yeah. to buy it back for $80,000. Yeah. I, 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 I can guarantee you that it's going to be a hundred thousand, at least a hundred thousand less than what you <laughs> paid for it. <laughs> yeah. They're like, no, 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 that's, that's ours. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's that's got dirt on the wheels. We can't sell that now. <laughs> I mean, we'll buy it, but you know, we can only pay we can only pay less than manu manufacturers that just yeah. sell price. <laughs> what do you think we are? Crazy? We can't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you trying to rip us off here? They're like, no, you know what the MSRP on this thing is? We ain't giving you two hundred and five thousand dollars. We'll buy like it the back for eight. And report this guy. You know what this I mean, guy tried to do? He tried to sell this car back to us for such an unreasonable amount. <laughs> yeah, right. For 200 some thousand, you might as well get an Aston Martin or something that goes for that price. Or a house. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, maybe the guy wants to live in it. There are a lot of places where you can buy a house for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
$200,000. Plus tax. Plus tax. Yeah. So I, I wonder mean, if you pay I insurance. California, it won't get you a house, but you can get you can get yourself a house here in San Antonio for that much. Not a great house, but a, but a decent house. Oh yeah, two hundred. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be like a two bedroom, one bath, or, or maybe three bedroom. Yeah, it's one a bath. house. Is a house. It's a house. It's a lot better than what you can get. In but California. how fast does it go? What's the zero to sixty on that house? Uh, yeah, don't be a dumbass and pay $100,000 over sticker price just to be the first one to have a Corvette. Unless that's it's really cool. Unless it's really cool. Yeah, they're pretty popular, obviously. They're trying to... Or try unless to you're really but, rich. Yeah, yeah. It might not be a lot for, for some people. Uh, but yeah, this is going on with uh, a lot of cars out there. Uh, a lot of the new GM electric cars are getting this uh, markup over MSRP. Uh, there's a shortage of uh, some cars, uh, you know, with this whole supply chain issue and uh, production issues. Um, so there's uh, there's uh, the opportunity now for for dealers uh, for for a while now, uh, charging over MSRP, ten twenty thousand dollars, and in this case, they're trying to jack it up to a hundred thousand over. Um, but uh, they're doing it because some people are paying. See, that's, that's the thing. Like, if you're going to, like, there's price gouging, it's like you're going to charge 10000 over MSRP for a Honda. You're like, you're like well, wait I, a minute. I don't know about a Honda, advantage. but, yeah, some cars, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're taking advantage of a bad situation. Now, doing it to some jackass that wants to be the first one to buy a, a fancy car. Eh. A not necessary vehicle. I need yeah. this to get to work. <laughs> very, like very thing. fast. <laughs> well, if you really need it, how about a hundred thousand dollars more? Oh, like oh no, no, they had it marked up by fifty thousand dollars, but they're like, Well, if you'd pay fifty thousand over, <laughs> you'd surely pay a hundred thousand. You'd probably pay a hundred thousand over too. <laughs> well, if you pay a hundred thousand over, then <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's see how let's see how how high we can go before this guy will say no. <laughs> yeah. You're playing a game of chicken with this guy. <laughs> yeah. Who's gonna blink first? Well, either way, they win. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, any, I guess anything like, over anything over the MSRP, right, is all gravy. For them. Yeah, like they could have sold it for one dollar over MSRP, and they still would have won, it's right? Free money, yeah. yeah. Oh, our beloved car dealers. Well, I mean, I hope this trend to get away from car dealers starts to take off. Actually, there's some other uh, new electric car makers. Since since they're new to the scene, they're trying to do the Tesla route and avoid the dealers uh, entirely. And uh, with behavior like this, more power to them. Actually, um, I'm selling electric cars. You can get the Founders Edition for a down payment <laughs> of uh, 50,000 only. Yeah, and and there's a waiting list though. Yeah, yeah, as soon as I get the 50,000, I'll have enough money to start working on it. <laughs> as, little, as soon as I learn how to make an electric vehicle. <laughs> you will be the first to have it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, come good luck serve. to you on that. All right, we'll keep you up to date on other breaking news, like uh, car dealers are not always honest, uh, water is wet, and it may rain sometime in the future. Coming up, uh, if any of those happen, we'll keep you up to date next week on Totally Baseless. Thanks for listening, and please hit subscribe, even if you just heard what you just heard. Hail monkeys. Bye. And as always, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs>